Hey, what it do? Welcome to another new episode of Locked On Bucks. On today's show, we finally got to see that Giannis Adetokounmpo, Victor Wimbe, Yama Lion or matchup. And trust me when I say it did not disappoint. The Bucks beat the Spurs 125 to 121 and Giannis went crazy. He had 44 points, 14 rebounds and seven assists. We're going to discuss the battle of those two unicorns as well as take a look at the matchup as a whole. Take a look at the Bucks' defense because they might have left some some questions still unanswered with this performance tonight. Plus, discuss some uh, Jay Crowder injury news that we heard during the lineup tonight. All of that and more coming up next. You are locked on Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Camille Davis, and you can catch me weekly on the Technical File Podcast, as well as Cheesehead TV's Carry the G and MKE. Joining me is the longtime voice of the pod and founder of BrewHoop.com, Frank Madden. We appreciate you for tuning in, and thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Now, as I mentioned, during the first matchup between the Bucks and the Spurs here in Milwaukee, Wimbayama did not play. So we did not get to see the battle of these two unicorns. But tonight in San Antonio, Victor Wimbayama and Yantai Dekumpo were definitely the headline and they did not disappoint, especially in the second half. As I mentioned, Giannis had 44 points, 14 rebounds, seven assists, shot 67% from the field. It's his fifth 40th point game of the season. Meanwhile, Victor Wimbayama in limited minutes that he did push in this game. He had 27 points, nine rebounds, five blocks, and finished with 55% shooting from the field. Seeing the two of them go at it was quite fun, Frank, I got to admit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to describe, you know, Wemby to someone who, like, doesn't watch basketball, right? I think all of us that have watched a lot of basketball and then you see him you know, when he's playing well and he's guaranteed to do something every game that you feel like you just have never seen somebody who can reach like he reaches or, you know, move like he moves. Um, he's just a one of one, right? And and we're used to that ourselves, being Bucks fans, watching Giannis for the last decade and seeing him move and, and do things in ways that no one else in the history of sport has done. And I think with Victor, just because he is just so freakishly tall <laughs> that it's even weirder and stranger. And I, I think, I think it's probably easier for someone who doesn't watch basketball to understand how weird uh, Victor is because he is so much bigger than everybody else on the floor. And you see him stand next to Brooke Lopez and, you know, dwarf Brooke, who's a, you know, seven foot, 280 pound splash mountain of a man. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, <laughs> this was kind of the, we were joking here before the pod. I mean, this was kind of like the classic box 23, 24 win in that it was underwhelming and frustrating in so many ways. You know, you're playing, it's literally the team with the worst point differential in basketball. They've won two games at home all year long. And somehow, you know, you defend so poorly that, Again, this young team starts to get energy. They start to feel positive. The crowd gets into it. In that third quarter, it really felt like a home crowd that had like only seen two wins all year because they were like, holy crap, we're in this game. This is fun. This is cool. Wemby is doing cool stuff. That matchup between Victor and Giannis was beginning to flash, and you started to really feel the energy as those two guys clearly also wanted to go at each other. Yeah. Um, so it ended up being, I think, you know, a great spectacle. Um but if you're talking about, you know, what does this say about the Milwaukee Bucks this season? I think it again showed that, like, they can kind of grind out these wins against teams that are clearly inferior to them. It was reminiscent of that home win against the Wizards where they left Landry Shamit wide, 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 wide open for a potential, uh, I think it was tying three. 
in the waning seconds. And Shamit like literally didn't realize he was as open as he was. That was probably the main reason he missed it. In this game, we saw it was Trey Jones, I guess it was in the corner, off just a you know mistake by the Bucks, sending two at the ball, wide wide open corner three. Couldn't have asked for a better look to tie it. He misses it, and that was it uh, in the final seconds of this game. But um, you said it, Camille. Let's start with some of the positives, right? Yeah. Wemby and and uh, and Giannis and you know Giannis uh, has has said nothing but positive things about Victor. Um, I think there's some history of of when before he came to the NBA. I think I thought I heard that like he had a Giannis jersey at one point, wherever it might be. So clearly, I think they respect each other's games. And Giannis had nice things to say about him in the post game interview. But between the lines, Giannis wanted to you know murder. Victor on the floor, and Victor obviously wanted to do stuff to Giannis, Brooke, uh, anybody else that was in his way. And sure enough, whether it was that you know self alley oop off the backboard from Victor, yeah. that around the back into the Brook Lopez facial where he basically didn't even jump, like he put Brooke on a post without even jumping. That's the strangest thing with with Wemby and watching him play, like he yeah. doesn't have to jump to dunk, and he's getting right. posters. <laughs> right. Um, so he made some incredible plays. He had the big three. Uh, late in the fourth quarter, um, although you know you still feel like he's a guy that you're happy to see taking threes at 29% for the year it was two for eight tonight. Um, but you know, credit to Giannis. I mean, talking about threes and being happy the guys take threes. Man, uh, the two most improbable threes of this season so far with Giannis hitting. Con- I think it was consecutive threes. Yep. Um, when the Bucks were down and you know basically brought them back. And then had two more three-point plays going right at Victor's chest, which is exactly what you need to do. The only thing he didn't do was on that final possession where he just bulldozed into Wemby when they had a chance up three to, to close it out. And Victor made a great recovery to to block Giannis's dunk attempt with the left hand. But um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like people who bought tickets to this game for that matchup, they went home very happy. If you're the Spurs, Spurs fans, you're not expecting a win anyway. So I'm sure they went home totally fine with seeing what Victor was able to do. And, you know, again, living up to, to a lot of his hype. Um, but on the flip side, they also got to see why Giannis is who he is. 44 points, 14 rebounds. Um, I think a couple steals a block. Um, you know, again, it seems like in the last 24 hours, we've seen Giannis kind of like, it was some mean mugging tonight, especially after some of the dunks, but he had kind of some pretty funny comments. Um, almost like kind of like almost like he's seeing all this chaos and BS around him right now. And he's just sort of saying, like, you know what? I'm gonna control what I can control. I'm gonna go play super hard. I'm gonna dunk on people, I'm gonna make the right play, and I'm gonna sleep well at night, knowing I did what I can, and I'm not gonna let it frustrate me, I'm not gonna get mad. Um and that kind of was a little bit of the vibe that we've gotten from him in these last two games in the post game last night, where he had some kind of funny comments about, oh, he's going to, you know, stay up all night thinking about Tyrese Halliburton and all that stuff. So I don't know. It's a weird place. I think the Bucks are in kind of a weird place right now. Um, but to quote Giannis a couple years ago when he was in Tampa, you may remember the video, Camille, when he was in Tampa playing the Raptors pregame, and he just went on his, like, I'm getting old and weird uh, soliloquy. And uh, I don't know, it feels like a little bit of that vibe in the last 24 hours, but when he's doing what he's doing, putting up monster numbers and, you know, tonight basically carrying the Bucks to a much needed, albeit um, not particularly impressive win. Again, you just got to start with Giannis and say, thank goodness you got him. Absolutely, because Giannis made it fun, at least through the stressful moments of wondering yeah. how are this, how is this five win Spurs team keeping up uh, with the Bucks at this point? But this was a second time of back to back, and I did figure coming into this game at the very least that the Bucks would play with really great energy, given the fact that they had just come off of back to back losses to the Pacers, and I think they did start the game with pretty good energy. I was surprised to see Chris Middleton starting in this game, his first back to back so far this season, although. He didn't play in the second half, and the Bucs definitely did miss his presence there in that second half, uh, especially at the start of the fourth quarter. I mentioned it before on here, but I do enjoy at the start of the quarters when Giannis and Dame are both sitting, letting Chris still kind of be out there with some of the other bench guys or other starters. And in this game without Chris, opening the fourth quarter, Griff really rolled out a lineup of campaign, Malik Beasley, Marjan Bochamp, Pat Connaughton and Brooke Lopez. And somehow 
they were only outscored by like three during their, <laughs> their two and a half, three minutes that they spent together on the campaign, court. just conspiring, conjuring up fouls to, to get some free throws. Those yeah. were pretty damn that important. Helped. Yeah. That helped a lot actually. And the Bucks needed all the help they could get. And as we mentioned, they leave San Antonio with the win, which was much needed. So I don't want to, you know, disregard that or downplay that, but their defensive effort still leaves a bit to be desired. As mentioned, this is a 5-1 Spurs team, and they were hanging in there until the very end with this Bucks team that has championship expectations. So I want to dive into the question around, is the current level of play defensively good enough for this team and those championship aspirations? So let's get into that right after this. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What is the one move that I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. And that is exactly why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn has a super wide network of more than a billion professionals which makes it the best place to hire. And hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. That is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus all of the leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. Whenever a new year comes around, you tend to hear a lot of new year, new me chatter. But what if we start thinking about that differently? Matter of fact, let's think about that in the opposite way, because let's ask the question of what are some things that you want to keep doing? What are some of the things that you are already crushing it at? See, because around New Year's, we always tend to get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. And we're all doing something right. Like maybe you finally organized one part of your space and now you want to tackle another one. Or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy can help you find your strength so you can ditch all of those different extreme resolutions and make changes that actually can stick. Therapy isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. It's something that can empower you to be the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. So just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched up with a licensed therapist. You can also switch therapists at any time for no additional charge if you find your first therapist doesn't fit you. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on MBA. Time is valuable and you can't get that back. I say that a lot, but it's so true. And that's why I appreciate everyone for tuning in to Locked On Bucks. Special shout out to all of those everydayers who tune in Monday through Friday to the content that we put out. And I want to put you on to some additional content that you might enjoy if you enjoy what we do here on Locked On Bucks, because Locked On launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel called Locked On Sports Today. And it's going to be here for you with 24-7 coverage of all the top sports stories of the day. It's brought to you by all the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Talked about the Bucks defense. Now, our good friend way, Eric Camille. Young, Camille, I, I feel like a, a therapy ad read is a really like really fitting way to lead into a discussion of the Bucks defense. When you said New Year, New Me, I was thinking New Year, New D, but no, New Year, not, not no before. new defense for the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> and we are, I think, I think, I think better help is going to be getting some more customers thanks to Bucks fans having to watch this defense Shoot. night in night out. They just might. They just might. Like I was saying, though, our friend Eric Name uh, from The Athletic, he, of course, had an amazing article after the second Pacers loss of 2024, uh, where he talked to Giannis a bit about the team's defense and just asked him about the team's defensive potential. And I want to pull that quote up here for the YouTube 
viewers as well. Let's just kind of read it out for those who might be on the audio platform. Yana said in this article from Eric Name, quote, I've been part of a few teams that have been number one in defense, but at the end of the day, it's all about pride and effort. If you have no pride and you don't put no effort in it, you don't get no results. At times, I think we have a lot of pride because we know that we are extremely good and we play hard. And at times we don't. You got to figure out a way on how you can just keep that engine going for longer. But again, the sky's the limit, I believe. If we lock in as a team and figure out that we cannot let a team score 140 points on us and we're trying to score 142, you can't be consistent that way. So we have to be able to guard. We have to do a better job guarding. And I wouldn't say they did too much of a better job at that tonight, unfortunately. And we've had conversations about this Bucks team and what they need to do to be a championship contending team. I do still believe if this team can be elite offensively and just average defensively, that they have a strong shot at making a lot of noise in the playoffs and making a championship run. But the Bucks defense has not been trending in a good direction over the last five games heading into tonight's game against the Spurs. The Bucks have been the ninth best offense and the 28th best defense, according to cleaning the glass. That's not going to be good enough. And if you look at the last five games as well, they had given up 334 points in the paint in their last five games. That's 66.8 per game over the last five. Luckily tonight, they only gave up 54 to the Spurs, but the general point remains, and that's the defense <laughs> hasn't been good. Frank celebrating 54 points in the paint tonight because that's just how bad the paint defense has been recently for the Bucks. I mean, you know, at some point you just sort of are what you are. And, you know, the midpoint of the season is very close, right? We we talked at the game 27 mark. That was basically the third, third way point of the season. And you're now 35 games in. So you're literally, you know, a couple weeks off of, of being at the 41 game mark, the midway point of the season. And it, it's not to say that, you know, teams haven't dramatically improved in certain aspects, um, you know, over the course of, you know, a half of a season or something like that, right? It's not to say the Bucks are doomed to be, you know, the 25th best defense or the 20th best defense for the entire season. But, you know, like you kind of think, put yourself in the shoes of these players, right? How many times are the coaches, you know, did, did, did the Bucks talk about transition defense? Do the Bucks talk about defensive rebounding? Do they talk about, you know, organization and like on that last play when they sent, you know, two guys at the ball handler and leave a guy wide open? Like, I'm sure they talk about this stuff. They have film sessions. You, you know, like you've had re remarkably good health this year. You cannot complain about the Bucks having injury problems. Dame's missed two games. Giannis has missed one game. And even Chris now is playing, you know, 30 minutes every night tonight and being an exception because it was his first back-to-back -back performance, but he looked good again tonight. Um, they've been remarkably healthy. They've, they're getting tons of reps with the core groups that you want to get reps with. And so, I mean, we can, again, we can talk about like, well, I mean, we should get Andre more minutes or Marjan more minutes, whatever it might be. You know, we'd like to get Jay Crowder back, right? We'll talk about Jay in a minute coming back from his injury, mm -hmm. but like, if Jay Crowder being out a couple months is like the big injury, you ain't got, you got nothing to complain about yeah. in the grand scheme of the universe. Right. And kind of just what we've seen is there is no upward trajectory with this, this defense. They've kind of just, I don't say that they've given up, but they've kind of just like, they, I think they just kind of are what they are and they don't really do anything well. Right. They don't rebound like they used to. Justin broke down the defensive rebounding problems. They went from elite, to below average, you know, we've talked about the fact that, um, you know, they now are giving up all these paint points, which early in the season, the shot chart was actually quite good. And so to me, that's kind of one of the concerns is that, you know, you've turned the game into a layup line in spite of Brooke Lopez being, you know, again, one of the leading shot blockers in the league and having to do a ton of work down there. You have Giannis doing what he can do. And in spite of that, again, like the fact that it's just a blow by, there fest you, you know most most nights and it's a transition fest most nights that you're just giving up all these layups and and easy buckets and teams are just teams are looking to attack you you know like that's one of the things like when you know Giannis has been one of the most impactful transition defenders in the league over the past five six years and, and you can just picture like when he's back 
teams just like don't want to guys just don't want to challenge him. But the Bucks as a team now, you can just tell. Like I mean, again, Pacers funhouse mirror team. Like they're not obviously representative of everybody, but against most teams, everybody feels like the Pacers now of late. You know, in yeah. terms of just hey, transition opportunities that happened again tonight. The transition numbers for the Spurs were really good slash very bad from a Bucks perspective. They caused the Bucks huge problems. Bucks actually defensive rebounded really well tonight. They didn't give up a ton of free throws. Yay. Um, <laughs> but, you know, again, like those recurring themes are the recurring themes. And, you know, for what? You don't force any turnovers. <laughs> like right. the, whole, the whole thesis of Adrian Griffin's philosophy is ball pressure, force turnovers, get easy baskets, which especially with this offense, like you really, you really don't need to force a ton of turnover, like newsflash guys. Like you've got like an historically great offense. You've got Damon Giannis and Chris, like you can be a half court offense. You don't need to get, you know, cheap buckets and transition to juice a bad half court offense. Um, so again, that's why they're still lead offensively with, even without having, even without the, even with the transition getting offense, getting worse than it was last year. Um, but it just feels like, you know, the, there's there's no trade-offs that they're winning right now. And so um, I think that's why, again, like, you have to question the job that Adrian Griffin and this coaching staff are doing because, again, I, I, I worry less about, like, you know, everybody gets hung up on adjustments, which I think to me, when most people complain about adjustments. They're complaining that whatever's, whatever's like, changing hasn't actually changed the outcomes. I think people are, like, outcome-based when they talk about adjustments. Yep. Again, I think... Coaches make lots of adjustments that, you know, us as fans, like, don't really pick up on. But they, we do pick up on the fact that it's a goddamn layup line and you're giving up 70 points in the paint again. <laughs> so, um, so that's, I think, worthy of frustration. So, um, you know, I, I like, again, like, what is Adrian Griffin going to walk into, you know, a film session with? And, and what is he going to say that's going to make the light bulb go on or that's going to make guys play differently or whatever? So is there are there personnel issues? Yeah. For yeah. sure, right? Like, there's personnel issues. There's also, you know, like, Bucks sort of are choosing this to some extent because, again, like, you're not playing your better defenders as much as you're playing weaker defenders. Yes, you're always going to play Dame, but, you know, like Malik Beasley, for instance, for sure. You know, Bobby, obviously, is a key part of the rotation. Um, so you're playing weak defenders, and they're getting exposed. And, again, the coaching staff hasn't figured out ways to mitigate that. And in a lot of cases, like watching Giannis, like, on that Wemby self alley oop, like Giannis is trying to be too aggressive on the perimeter yeah, and basically gets spun around. And then next thing you know, Wemby's throwing it off the backboard to himself for a dunk. And we've seen that from Giannis a lot this year, where again, he like, you know, like I expect him to probably like slap the floor or something and do some like, you know, I'm going to lock you up 30 feet from the hoop. It's like, dude, Giannis, you're like enormous. Like you, you don't have to do that. Like just sit back a little bit. If people want to shoot, pull up jumpers, like I think that's okay relative to just blowing by you and putting the defense in a rotation. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think they have a bunch of problems and it's the same problems we've been talking about all year. And so I think, again, I don't think they're changing the coach anytime soon because mm -hmm. that's too embarrassing to admit that you made a mistake and there's very, it's very hard to, <laughs> to improve via coaching change mid season. I don't know if the Lakers want to do a trade with Darvin Ham. Come on down, Darvin. Lake, <laughs> Laker fans seem to hate Darvin now. So, you know, maybe we'll do a little swap. But, um, but so again, again, you kind of come back to some kind of trade, which again, hard to make a big trade if you're the Bucks, given, you know, what you have from an asset perspective. But again, if you're just going to keep playing the same guys, then I think you're going to, John Horst needs to figure out something different in terms of the guys that are at uh, Adrian Griffin's disposal. And, Yes, I would like to see Jay Crowder back, but I mean, Jay Crowder is not the answer to the Bucks. You know, defense getting to where it needs to be <laughs> to compete for a championship. I think it could help, but um, there's obviously broader issues that run deeper than personnel. And you know, again, there's just a lot of pieces here that, again, it's it's just a team that's less than the sum of its parts right now. And of course, you have to look at players, but I think that's also that's a coaching problem. 
Yeah, it's part of that and the effort of the players as well. And that's part of why I looked at the five game sample, just because I'm trying to see the trend. Like, I want to see if the Bucks have been getting better than what the, they're ranked currently as a season as a whole. And the last five game sample size was just so surprising to me. Where I'm like, wow, like we are trending in the wrong direction. And that's something that Dane mentioned after the Pacers game as well, where he's like, you want to look at the sample size, like in 30 games, we look back, we want to make sure that we're able to say like, wow, like that was embarrassing. We, we, we were playing really bad then, but now we are playing better. So, you know, it, there's only so much you can do with the current personnel on the team. Like I do think there are certain things that you can try a little bit more. And of course having Jay Crowder back will help, but uh, the players have to do better, uh, especially just how it seems like at this point, if you get the bucks in a scramble, it's, it's going to be an open look for you at some point. The Bucks just can't seem to keep up uh, when they're trying to switch out, when they're trying to catch up, when they're trying to scramble. So the players have to be a bit better. And again, I'm not sure what the, the ceiling is for this defense. I don't think it's, you know, top 10 with how it's currently constructed. Can they get back to being at least average? That's my hope at this point with this current roster. And like we mentioned, Jay Crowder coming back should be able to help that a little bit. And we did hear during the broadcast tonight, some injury update news around Jay. So let's dive into that right after this. When you're braving the cold or dealing with crowds, golly, grocery shopping can be the worst. It's already hard to get out the house when it's this cold. And now you got to deal with crowds. <sighs> So why not stay at home and actually let Hungry Root handle it? With Hungry Root, you can kickstart a week of healthy eating and get groceries delivered right to your door. Hungry Root makes it easier for everyone to eat healthy. Doesn't matter what your diet or lifestyle is, Hungry Root has a plan for you. So whether you are gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan, dairy-free, whatever, they have something for you. All you got to do is take a fun and short quiz and Hungry Root will get to know you, your goals, and how you like to eat. They'll even ask you what flavors you like, what kitchen appliances you use, and more. And then they'll keep your needs and preferences top of mind and start building your cart with all the grocery needs for the week, plus delicious recipes so you know how to use the food that you're getting. Hungry Root goes beyond your weekly grocery haul with thousands of easy recipes that can actually put your groceries to good use before you forget all about them in the back of the fridge. And we've all been there with that random bag of broccoli or whatever the case may be. So right now, Hungry Root is offering Locked On Bucks listeners 40% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. The best part about Hungry Root is that it follows a simple standard. It's got to taste good. It's got to be quick to make. It's got to contain whole and trusted ingredients. So make sure you go over to HungryRoot.com slash Locked On to get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. Again, that's HungryRoot.com slash Locked On. And please don't forget to lose our link when you get there just so they know that we sent you. Jay Crowder appears to be on his way back to the Bucks During the broadcast tonight on TNT, it was mentioned that Jay Crowder is now pain-free. He's been cleared for on-court work, and he plans to play five-on-five -five basketball this Sunday, and that'll be a huge hurdle for him to clear before his return. So if all of that goes well, he could be back as soon as next week. So that is some good news for this Bucks team who has needed Jay Crowder uh, on this team, just like I need uh, a dog appearance on Locked on Bucks here in the background. Yeah, this is Dudley. Dudley is a, a moose of a golden retriever here. Oh, oh, he's he's. This is what he tra basically tries to like climb you. So if you're not if people are on <laughs> listening to the audio version, aren't going to really enjoy it. But he's got one paw now on my leg, and he'll his next move will be to put the other paw, and then he would try to then put his paws on top of my shoulders as well because basically he wants to just like get taller than me yeah <laughs> you're, you're a good dog you're a moose um <laughs> jay crowder um so i think we've talked about i mean i think the thing i'm me i'm probably mainly looking forward to with jay is he enables you to play with uh, uh oh dudley's going for my computer uh now um he allows you to play with i think quote unquote smaller lineups because again mm -hmm. he's a big dude. He's actually a big wing. I mean, the Bucks really don't have like a big wing in the traditional sense that they can throw out there and put at the four with Giannis at the five, the way that we saw them do it, you know, especially a few years ago when you would see them 
role with you know PJ at effectively like the four. Um, you know they they were able to do a, a fair bit of that with Wes, Chris, and Drew, and you know Pat or pick a fourth guy. Um, because again, like with Wes and Drew, they were so like just like stout. You know, like you weren't that worried. Like you could survive if those guys got posted up by a bigger player, just because like you know they're just tough mfers and and aren't going to get overwhelmed physically and they can switch um so again i mean i i'm very hesitant to like put too much faith and too much expectation on jay um but as you know i've been saying for a couple of years you know going back to you know time with in with kane again i still think jay is more of a small ball four anyway um so he you know especially in the regular season probably is going to be playing more as a three just because you've got Giannis, Bobby, Brooke at the, at the big spots. Um, but I do like the optionality that Jay gives you to, to play a little bit smaller, more mobile. Um, and so then, you know, if you've got Jay, <clears throat> then you have a little more optionality in terms of what you can do with lineup wise. And, you know, I think that was one of the things that, you know, I was, I've, I've been surprised, right. We saw last night against the Pacers, which I think we talked a little bit about, you know, they did run some lineups with Giannis at the five, which they basically haven't done at all this mm-hmm. year. Um, and throwing out Andre and having Andre, you know, defend a little bit bigger than he has been, right? We've typically seen Andre defending, you know, shooting guards and even point guards as like the point of attack guy. But I mean, his fouling has been so like out of control that, I mean, he's averaging over six fouls per 36. Like to put that in perspective, the Nassus, who's like one of the biggest foul machines you'll see, I looked this up. He's never averaged more than 5.2 fouls per 36 minutes. So like Andre is literally like, beyond the Nassus on the like foul rate, you know, per minute charts. Um, and again, like, it's not like he's just idiotically like doing right. stuff and completely like out of his league. Like he gets a lot of fouls for just basically like playing defense, <laughs> you know, a lot of body. A lot of yeah. Body. Like a lot of like, you're a rookie who's trying to play defense type of foul yeah. calls, which sucks, but you know, that's reality. Um, and so I think, you know, putting him off ball a little bit, in these lineups where maybe he's defending like a wing and not just, you know, like a lead ball handler or something. Um, I think there's again, some potential and and maybe that's a better way to get him some minutes as well. Um, And again, this is a problem, right? Is when you don't have like when all your guards are basically like weak defenders, right? You're like kind of main small guys, Dame Malik and campaign. It's also hard, right? Because when you try to play small, that means like you're playing like two of those guys typically. And so, it's hard to then be really good defensively when you're getting even smaller, right? Bucks can't defensive rebound with their big guys on the floor. Now, how are you going to rebound when you've got a smaller lineup out there? Right? So I think there's multiple reasons why reasonably you would not, you have not seen smaller lineups. Giannis also like, I don't think Giannis wants to play center very much. Um, And again, I'm not saying like it should be something they're doing a ton, but it's typically been like a 15 to 20% type thing for Giannis's minutes come in those types of lineups. So I'm curious to see kind of if that can maybe give them a different look, especially late in games. Um, you know, just can you get guys on the floor who can actually keep dudes vaguely in front of them? Um, mm-hmm. Because again, I think that's the root of kind of their broader issues, right? It's just that too many blow buys and, and not enough, you know, possessions where, you know, a guy just stands up and, and prevents, prevents the dude from immediately getting a lane to the basket, drawing help, et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's, it, we'll see let's be careful about expecting too much you know jay also was shooting like what 45 percent from three early in the season yeah, crazy probably, <laughs> he's not going to carry over um but i don't know i mean it's it's kind of funny like I, when jay first got here i kind of was like putting him on sort of like the, the pj kind of scale as far as my like what he would look like and again he's not a def- the, the defender that pj was you know in 2021 when we saw him help the bucks win a championship but Jay's also a much more talented offensive player, right? I mean, he can hit in between shots. He can put it on the deck a little bit. You know, again, you're not going to want to play offensively through him, but um, but Jay's a talented guy. So you just hope that he comes back and doesn't have, you know, a huge kind of, you know, ramp up to get going again. But again, it's not like you're asking him to play 30 minutes a night or something like that as well. Um, so I, I don't know really. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, like, I'll, I'll put the question to you, Camille. I mean, when Jay Crowder comes back, what's your, you know, call it nine man rotation, right? Nine, 10 guys. Mm-hmm. It's probably the most that you would see on a normal night in the playoffs. It's probably closer to eight, nine guys. I mean, how are you thinking about what the bucks are going to look like with, 
with Jay coming back and maybe maybe sub question who is your starting five if you had to play the Boston Celtics in a playoff series tomorrow or next week or whatever you want to say in the near future because to me Malik Beasley ain't in it you know that's a really good question I do believe we see the Celtics next week as well I'm not sure if Jay will be back in time for that but if I had to do a nine-man rotation for the playoffs, of course, you got Giannis, you got Chris, you got Brooke, you got Dame. Like those four, that's easy. Malik Beasley's going to get playing time. Um, and as we've talked about, the on off ratings are not on off ratings, but just the numbers for that starting five have been pretty good so far this season. Uh, off the bench, that's where it gets interesting. We've seen in the past, Bobby Portis doesn't play well against the Boston Celtics. So I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get from him in that series. And that's again when Jay Crowder is a big piece of that. So give me Jay for sure. I know that campaign is our only backup guard at this point, but (laughs) I am not excited about that prospect either. Like I think I honestly would go with more like Andre Jackson Jr. or Marjan in that situation, even Pat, um, and let the ball handler, the person who's initiating offense be either Chris or Giannis or Dame in those minutes. If Dame's sitting and you need those backup point guard minutes, then let the offense run through Chris or Giannis primarily um, that way. But I have some concerns about Bobby Portis and campaign um, in the series against the Boston Celtics. So something's got to shake. Something has got to shake uh, with this roster and they have to play better as well. And again, they're going to get a chance next week, but the next Bucks game that we get a chance to see happens to be against the Houston Rockets in Houston on Saturday night. I'm going to be there. I was going to ask if you're going to be there. Yeah, there's my, uh, normally a good Bucks representation at these Houston Rocket games in Houston. Yeah, it's like weird because I mean San Antonio, the the Spurs arena is like maybe an hour and a half from me here in Austin, and I've never once gone to a Spurs Bucks game, and it usually just comes down to like it's a weeknight, and I don't want to have to, you know, right. drive two hours each way or whatever it is. Um, and also, like I'm always wary of the Spur banana peel potential which you know tonight almost obviously was was that case um but yeah my uh, my wife's kind of like her basically her her godfather um uh is has rocket season tickets and so he uh nice. he asked us while we were home for thanksgiving if i wanted the tickets and i said sure saturday night i can't turn it down you know yeah. what kind of bucks fan would i be um <laughs> if i you know can just go stay at my in-laws and see a bucks game for free right i mean i gotta gotta take that so um i'm trying to remember i think the last time I saw the Bucks play in Houston was the season opener a few years ago um, where they were down like 10 in the fourth quarter and came back and won. Giannis fell, fouled out. And uh, I think that might have been, I think that was 1920 because I think that was Wes Matthews' first uh, first uh, season with the Bucks. So um, hopefully they can do it again, but the Rockets have been a way better home team and certainly the way the Bucks have been playing lately. uh I guess I let's just say this. I hope the Rockets um, miss a whole lot of three pointers on Saturday night and do the Bucks a solid because uh, I'm not so so confident in the Bucks <laughs> playing at a high level on on both ends these days. No, I don't blame you based on what they put on tape. I don't blame you at all. But that'll do it for today. Let's get up out of here tonight. Um, again, make sure that you go and check out Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe. First ever. First ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. So make sure you lock in on that Uh, for Frank and myself. We'll catch you guys later. Have a good weekend, everybody.